Hi. There are many occasions whereby we try to design power supplies but we actually don't know the transfer function accurately or it's just too big or complex or there are many unknowns. Now there is a way of dealing with this without any mathematics and in this video we're going to talk about how you stabilize your power supply without actually having a transfer function. Typically, when we try to stabilize a power supply and design a compensator, we start with a mathematical model or the transfer function. And then after we've got the transfer function, we get the mathematical model of the compensator and we place the poles and zeros in order to meet the stability criteria. The problem with this is that the transfer function is often either not completely known or there is too much uncertainty or it just does not, the equation, mathematical equations do not actually fit reality. Okay, so we have come up and introduced a new feature into WDS whereby you can actually measure the plant and after you have measured the plant you select the poles and zeros without any mathematics. So we use body 100 to just measure the plant and then we just manipulate this plant in order to shape it in order to get the stability, uh, a, a stable loop and meet the stability criteria and then you create the compensator component values based on the poles and zeros that you have placed. Now we have created many other videos on how you go about the stabilizing power supplies and so on but for now a quick recap in order to make sure that our power supplies is stable we have to make sure that we have got a good crossover frequency, good amount of gain margin, good amount of phase margin and the slope at crossover frequency has to be shallow. So all I have to do is measure the plant of a converter. I in fact don't even care what the topology is, all I need to have a proper measurement. Yeah. And then I start placing poles and zeros, mathematically manipulating this in the software so that it's shaped into what gives me the correct stability criteria factors. So if I show you this on a different plot, <coughs> here the blue trace is the plant. This is for a voltage mode buck converter. But as I said, I don't even need to know what the topology is. That was my gain. And this is my phase. What I need to do is shape this so that it goes and starts looking like the green line, which is the stabilized power supply with good gain margin, good phase margin, and so on. Again, that was the gain. And this is the phase. So, it's a voltage mode buck converter. I'm going to use a type 3, 3 compensator, and for that I have one pole at origin, I have two zeros and I have two poles. By looking at the blue line I see that I have got a resonant bump here. The resonant bump here is the result of two poles of the plant. I can see that it's about 1.6 kilohertz. So all I have to do to cancel these two is to place the two pole, two zeros of my transfer function at 1.6 kilohertz. At 1.6 kilohertz I'm going to put two zeros there and there. And I've used these two, I cannot use it anymore. That makes this go flat. Then I can see here that the phase is going up and also you can see clearly on the plant that the gradient of the gain is shallowing. So if the gradient is shallowing and the phase is going up, I have got an ESR zero around this point here. So if you were to try to work out where it is, it would be probably somewhere around 10 kilohertz. So I can place one of these plant poles at 10 kilohertz, so this will be a pole at 10 kilohertz, and I've used this one. The second pole I can place at half the switching frequency in order to reduce high frequency noise and then finally I've left with more or less a straight line and of course the polar origin will shift this thing up and down so the final thing that I have to do is place this polar origin so that it cross over where I want it to cross. 
Now, all of this on a graph paper or with hand or a calculator would have been really complicated. However, we have introduced this new feature into WDS whereby as soon as you add these poles and zeros in the location that you want, it will automatically redraw this curve and gives you automatically phase margin, gain margin, slope and crossover frequency. So you can very quickly manipulate these in order to meet the stability criteria without even knowing what type of converter it is or without having access to the transfer function. So what we're going to do now is going to demonstrate this to you on the board with Bodhi 100 and WDS. First thing that we need to do in order to be able to stabilize our, let's say, black box power supply is to be able to measure the plant. In order to do that, we need to somehow at least make it regulate. Now, this can be done quite easily because performance is not important at all at this stage. Typically, all you need to do is put one capacitor in the microfarad region in the feedback path of the compensating op amp. So you don't really need any calculation of poles and zeros. A large capacitor, that gives you a pole at origin extremely slow and that will just stabilize the power supply. And this is only temporary to allow us to measure the plant. I have done this exactly right now and this is what I am measuring, which is the plant of this converter. I let you into a secret, it's a buck converter, but that is not the point. You don't need to know that. But what you can see here, that you have got the resonance around here, yeah? And then you can see that one, the gradient shallows around 10 kilohertz and the phase goes up. So you also have got a zero around here. So you've got a double pole, complex conjugate pairs of poles here, and you've got a zero there. Then all I have to do is save this to memory, which I have done, and then I save this file. So now I'm going to open WDS. This is what you'll see when you open WDS first. And I can select different topologies, but now we have added this new feature, which is called generic Bode import only. That means that WDS actually doesn't care what topology you've got. All it needs is the measurement of the plant, which I have just saved. So I select this. Oops, beg your pardon. I first import my body, import body, and I go to plant, which I just saved. There we go. This is the black line, is the plant that I have just imported, and now I go into generic mode, and I will tell that this is the plant. If I now take off the black line, is the measured plant, and the blue line, as you can see, is now what both WDS is assuming to be the plant. I superimpose them one last time. As you can see, the black line is now the measured plant that has been imported, but when I, take the, when I turn that off, I have now got the blue plant. So as far as WDS is concerned, this is the new plant. So I can then look at the loop, which is the green line, and all I have to do is to make sure that this green line meets the stability criteria. And WDS allows me to do this. I go to the controller design tab. It is a, I can see this resonance here. So it is a voltage mode converter. I use a type three because it's voltage mode. Remember for current mode, we use type two. For voltage mode, we use type three. I'm using an op amp. And then I start placing my poles and zeros. I see from here, if you remember, that there was a double pole because of this bump. If you look at the plant, you'll see that there is a tiny bump here and it is around 1.5 kilohertz. So I cancel that as I suggested on the board I, with two zeros. I've got the plant has got a double pole at around one and a half kilohertz. And here I add compensate the pole at one and a half kilohertz and one and a half kilohertz. Then you look up here for your stability. You can see that at the moment it is saying that you have got um, you're crossing at 20 kilohertz, you've got 100 degrees of phase margin, 15 degree dBs of gain margin, and so on. But I'm not quite happy with this because the gain here is quite low, so I'm gonna play with it a little bit more. I can see that the phase is going up here around the 10 kilohertz region, and I can also see that around the 10 kilohertz region, this gain slope is changing, it's shallowing out, and that means I've got a zero here. 
my compensator has got a pole. So I use one of my poles in order to cancel that. So the ESR zero, which I just talked about, is at 10 kilohertz. So I will place a compensator pole at 10 kilohertz. And you can see now that this line here has flattened out. Yeah? When this was, when I was not cancelling it, you could see that this gain was going up. Sorry, this phase was going up and the gain was shallowing out. When I do cancel it, you can see that the ESR zero has been cancelled because the phase is now flat and this line is beautiful and flat. Yeah. The next thing, I know the switching frequency of this, it's at 200 kilohertz. I've got one spare pole, so I place that at one half of the switching frequency in order to attenuate my high frequency noise. And now, I am crossing at 20 kilohertz. I have got 69 degrees of phase margin, 18 degrees of uh, um, gain margin, and I am, and the slow path crossover frequency is minus 26, which is a little bit on the high side, but I, I actually reckon you could get away with this. I reckon you could solder the right components for these poles and zeros and actually have a nice uh, power supply. But what I can do, Finally, the last thing, let's just for practice, we've got a polar origin, and of course the polar origin determines whether you cross high or cross low. And we know from previous videos and our workshops that the higher the crossover frequency, the faster the transient response, but the more the possibility of going unstable, it's harder to pass the MCT test and so on. So I'd like to reduce this crossover frequency. So instead of 2,800, if I half that to let's say 1,500, I expect to be crossing around 10 kilohertz instead of 20 kilohertz. So let's see what happens. So I can change that to 1,500 and there we go. We are crossing at 11 kilohertz. We, are, we have got 70 de degrees of phase margin, 24 dBs of gain margin, and now my slope is also beautiful at minus 21. Remember, before it was a little bit high. I was, it was a little bit too sharp. As far as the Bode plot is concerned, this power supply is now designed and is stable. Right? All I need to do is convert this into the R's and C's that I require for the op-amp. And of course, WDS will do that for you also. So you go finally to analog design tab. The voltage reference is from the IC that you buy. In our case, it was two and a half volts. And then WDS will calculate all of these, but first you need to tell WDS how much current you're willing to lose down here. Right? And this is the potential divider that determines the voltage output of the power supply. Now, I typically try to avoid currents lower than 100 microamps um, in any part, if possible, of the circuit because when it goes to the EMC test chamber and it gets radiated, if your currents are that low, it is quite possible that the, the radiation will cause a malfunction and you may fail the EMC test. <clears throat> so I tell WDS that I'm going to allow one milliamp of current to go down here. And as soon as I do that, WDS will automatically calculate R1 and RB. So R1 is set to 800 um, ohms, and RB is set to uh, 2 1⁄2 kilo ohms. Then the values of R2, R3, C1, C2, and C3 are automatically calculated by WDS, but you can also use the drop-down box to go to the nearest preferred values, or you can do it by hand. This is 900 ohms, so I'm going to put 1 kilo ohms in. This is 12 ohms. That is available, so I'll just use 12 ohms. Then 112 nanofarads. I'm just going to put 100 nanofarads. And remember, and see that as I change these, the poles and zeros change. So it calculates the new poles and zeros based on the near nearest preferred values. 113 nanofarads. I will change to 120 because I can buy it easily. And 19 nanofarads, I'll change to 22 nanofarads. Okay, so we go back and see whether this has worked into frequency response. Whoa, something has gone wrong. I beg your pardon, 130, 112. Ah, yeah, there we go. This should be, I've said 12 kilo ohms, whilst in fact it should be. 12 ohms, and there we go, everything is fixed now. You can see that with the nearest preferred values, 
I've got 10 kilohertz crossover, 65 degrees phase margin, 25 dBs gain margin. I've got a slope of around 25, um, minus 25. The power supply is nice and stable, and we are done. So we managed to design a complete controller for a power supply. We don't even know the topology. We don't need any mathematical equations or transfer functions. We've managed to place the poles and zeros in order to meet the stability criteria and got the component values for this circuit. And of course, this can be applied to a whole bunch, pretty much any topology that you've got. In another video, we will do other topologies. But for now, I'd just like to introduce you to the way we did it without any extensive mathematics. Thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope to see you in one of our workshops.